Hi, I'm sharing my daily style for winter 2020. Um, I call my outfit because I'm a wannabe uh, Mexican. I'm a Mexican woman at heart, um, coated in um, a lot of makeup, um, foreign Korean. Um, but I call this outfit like casual Bloomingdale's chola, if that's not offensive. Um, so I've just got flat hair, washed it today, gold hoops. Uh, wannabe 508 with my Too Faced Melted Matte Drop Dead Gorgeous. Very tricky, dark color, so get you a retractable lip pencil, $6, sometimes 4 on Amazon. Even the same product, just different prices. Um, my sweater is like a warm, like orange brown tone, like loose, big sweater from like Banana Republic. And then I got my terrible Gabby Riel Planet Pave Crystal Pendant from Saks Off Fifth for about like forty dollars. I still have it. Um, and then what makes it Bloomingdale's would be my jacket, um, Pendleton wool coat. Uh, it's got a beautiful lining, and then I'm wearing skinny jeans, but they call it actually NYDJ Alina ankle jeans. But it's very skinny, very high waist, a nice, rich, dark blue color. Okay. So, um, these jeans are so well priced. Sale on sale, discount code, looking in the wrong place. After discount code, it came to about like 20, almost $22 for the jeans. And they have a little stretch to them. And they're pretty high waist. And the jacket, Bloomingdale's, Pendleton. So that's your Bloomingdale's Chola right there. Got my hoops. Um, and then my Gabby Riel pendant. Um, and I did mention my lipstick. Now, if I wanted to add extra metal from Costco, my Marc Jacobs glasses looks like uh, Maricela from uh, the movie Selena, the mother. Um, so. I wanted to talk about something because it's starting to sprinkle. I wanted to talk about mistakes. Um, I have a, a young child, a toddler, four, just turned five, and he's always butting heads with me. And of course he's always making mistakes and I'm always telling him what the answer is because I'm just, you know, ten times older than him. He's probably smarter than me, you know, really. But I just saw the look of despair on his face. Like him just always getting it wrong. And after a certain point, he had a look of like hopelessness. Like he was just never going to get it right. And he was just one of those people who just, just getting it wrong. I don't want him to get too comfortable in that feeling. I want him to know that I'm wrong a lot of times too. And I'll point it out. And I'll remind him that I'm just a kid too. I just grew up and became your mom. So when I make mistakes, I tell him. I proudly tell him. I want him to have opportunities to feel like we're on a level playing field. I want him to have a taste of what it feels like to be right. To get it right. Car coming. Hold on. I want him to have a taste of what it feels like to do a good job at something, to have pride in it. I want him to have a taste of what it feels like to be great at something, to love what he does, to have ideas.
creativity, find himself, feel empowered, like find things he's just naturally good at or that he has a, a passion for. So sometimes I'll let him just do things that just make him happy, whether he's making a mess or just watching some nonsense YouTube video eating popcorn. I want him to get like really comfortable and familiar of what it feels like to get it right, to be free of judgment, just have a good time, love what he does. This freedom of the mind, even as a child, are children really free? I want him to like sometimes just do things that he likes to do because when he grows up, a lot of people are going to like direct him this way and this way, what he thinks he likes, what he thinks, what they think he should do, what society thinks he should be, how far he can go. So to me, that's like really important because when I was a kid, even in school, I wasn't focused. I was like in my own head, just trying to get by. I didn't think I was good at school. I had poor attendance. I didn't have the will or the desire to do my assignments. I didn't think I was good. The world told me I wasn't good at it. a lot of things, and I believed them. And then when I was like in my 20s, I started going to junior college, and I liked my courses, and I did a good job, and I like really just passionately loved my history classes and political science and speech. I even sang my speech about the branches of government. Like I sang, I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And, um, so I was like literally finding myself, finding that, you know what? I'm not terrible at school. I'm not a terrible student. I'm not a terrible person. It just took a really long time to figure that out. I just didn't have the opportunity to, like, to taste it. Taste it long enough to remember what it tasted like or to want it again, to aspire for something. So, something to keep in mind. Um, and then, like, my perspective changed. Uh, my sister used to travel the world even, like, a full year she traveled and a good portion of it alone and other times, like, with people. But that and watching Rick Steves on PBS because my parents didn't have cable. Inspired me to go backpacking in Thailand. And I went for a month. And I had watched plenty of videos, got my lonely planet, packed my supplies. I just got so excited, I forgot that I was all alone and I was going alone. So that first night in Bangkok when I unpacked my underwear, like a tear started to roll down my eye. It was so unexpected. I was like, why am I crying? So I was like, I don't know, but I got to push that back in because I got a month here. That's when I realized, like, you're alone, dummy. You're alone in a country. You came by yourself. You don't even have a cell phone. You just got this book, which is a great book. By train, by plane, by boat, it'll get you anywhere. Never felt like I was overcharged. Like, everything was laid out. You don't even need a phone or money. And I was never really alone. I traveled all over the place, like the northern border of Myanmar, the Gulf of Thailand, like the other side of Phuket, the jungles of like just random places in Thailand, the cities. And um, I literally like had enough time to be alone. I mean, I was with a lot of just people backpacking, but just random places. But it was like an opportunity where no one knew me. I could be who I wanted to be. If I didn't like chocolate ice cream, no one's going to be like, you do, don't you know you do? And it was like, literally, it was like a blank slate. I didn't even know who I was. I didn't even know how to, like, paint the canvas. I didn't even realize it until the very end of the trip. I didn't even know what to fill it with. But uh, I guess that's what it means to, like, find yourself. And then I think of like,
If I had the opportunities like that seed planted early, there's the mail lady, and watered and nurtured and had a taste of chocolate. And like aspired to get like two scoops of chocolate next time with fudge on the top and you know, like whipped cream and sprinkles and a cherry on top. Like to aspire for a cherry on top of a sundae when I didn't even like can't recall what chocolate tastes like. And that makes me think of like the criminal justice system. Like I think that when someone is incarcerated, the minute that their sentence begins, you should just get like one of those cheap manila like folders and get a Sharpie and put that person's name and put the seed where you start planting the seed and watering the seed like of what it tastes like to have accountability, what it tastes like to have responsibility and grace and humility and pride and enjoy something you do and like ideas come up to support that and to like yourself and to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and love yourself I guess and I think to myself if there were like cabinets whether it's like a digital spreadsheet just filled with like seed folders how reformation and the rate of recidivism would be okay, it's so hard to say that word like how it would like have a ripple effect on our town and our families and our communities if people who never got a taste of chocolate was given like a chocolate milkshake every day a chocolate cake chocolate pudding and by the time they got out, they wanted to be like Willy Wonka of the Chocolate Factory. And anyway, thanks for watching. And if you want more style inspiration, like my Bloomingdale's Cholas. Um, please watch another video.